those were the days. <laughs> Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we'll be counting down our picks for the top 10 reasons why retro gaming is awesome. For this list, we'll be ranking the most positive aspects about retro or nostalgic gaming practices, notable facts about old school gaming which should not be forgotten by modern generations of gamers. We'll be taking into account all sorts of retro gaming medium throughout the course of this list, from stand-up arcade machines to home consoles. Number 10. Realism Optional Bubble-blowing baby dragons, anthropomorphic blue hedgehogs, ducks in suits of armor, and even McDonald Land mascots. The idea of fantasy was no stranger when it came to the world of retro gaming, making many classics of the day exercises in beautiful, imaginative madness. Although many current-gen games still employ this sense of wonder and magic, the modern focus on gritty, realistic situations and comparisons to everyday life make taking a step back into the wonderful world of simple, old-school gaming all the more relaxing and fun. Number 9. Risks and Experimentation Excellent. These days, big AAA games prefer to play it safe with big, focus group-based results and tried-and-true ideas. But back in the day, some of the best games on the market were often the ones that tried something new. Take Qbert, for example, a puzzle platformer with bizarre-looking characters and a foul mouth. Yet, surprisingly, that really worked. Or how about Mortal Kombat? who dared to introduce shock value to their game, much to the chagrin of concerned parents. Surprisingly, there are a lot of games out there that were criticized back in the day for going against the trends for bizarre reasons. All that being said, this sort of thing has seen a revival in recent years, thanks to the explosion of the indie market. Number 8. Physical Media Still Lives Experience the challenge of endless adventure. Welcome to The Legend of Zelda. Take a look through a collection of any self-respecting retro gamer, and you'll likely come across a cornucopia of gloriously gaudy artwork, fascinatingly detailed instruction manuals, and multicolored cartridges. So, Legend of Zelda includes invaluable maps and strategic playing tips. This was the world of retro gaming packaging, a truly awesome and artistic aspect of the medium that speaks largely of its intrinsic nature as a valuable work of art. Whether it's the iconic layout of the boxes themselves, the special coloring of classic cartridges such as The Legend of Zelda, or the countless hours that were likely spent composing the physical maps for early RPGs, the art of physical media was definitely not lost on gaming developers back then. These black box games are really cool to look at, very iconic, and the Popeye one doesn't disappoint at all. Number 7. No Installation Needed Unless you were a PC gamer, with your favorite console, there was no need to install any aspect of the games onto hard drives back in the 80s and 90s. Heck, there wasn't even a hard drive involved at all. Instead, the only installation needed was the actual hooking up and plugging in of your chosen gaming console. This is the item that originally came with the system, and it involves hooking up to your TV using the coaxial connection. That means no need to wait for patches, system updates, or the game to finish downloading. Just insert your newly purchased game into the console, and away you go or at least right after you blew into the cartridge. Number 6. Pure Gaming Satisfaction In the pre-internet age, there was a certain special satisfaction involved in making it all the way through a particularly difficult game, in order to catch an equally satisfying end sequence. While that still exists today, there was no YouTube or means of seeing an ending prior to achieving it yourself. Unless maybe you were lucky enough to be in the room when a friend happened to beat the game, or maybe if you caught a glimpse of a screenshot in a magazine. This made achievements like completion a hot button point of conversation between gamers, a topic of discussion made all the more natural given how so many iconic games of the day were being played simultaneously by millions of gamers around the world. Number 5. Replayability Another most excellent aspect of retro gaming tied to the notion of endings and difficulty was replayability, specifically going back and attempting to run through the game again, such as in the hopes of acquiring a better ending screen, a la Super Metroid. <laughs> 
this idea of playing the same games over and over again also applies to high score based games in the arcade. Party games such as Super Mario Kart or fan favorites like Contra, where players simply had a blast playing through stages which, over time, had become comforting and nostalgic, like revisiting old friends. Number 4. Cheat Codes Speaking of Contra, what gamer doesn't use the iconic Konami code to give their characters 30 lives in their war against the biomechanical alien hordes? Now that classic combination of up up down down left right left right B A followed by select for two players and then start is just one of a multitude of cheat codes designed to make the gaming experience fun, easier, or otherwise unique. Cheat codes were just one aspect of retro gaming tweaking, alongside with password cheats, which were almost as closely associated with the medium as the classic games themselves. Remember the first time you saw the Doom guy's eyes light up after you typed in IDDQD? Good times, bro. Number 3. Gameplay Focus Less talk, more rock. This was the main objective behind games of the retro world, exemplifying a simple focus about the gameplay itself, rather than inundating the player with a large amount of backstory and expository dialogue concerning the plot. Instead, many titles of the day simply launched players almost immediately into the action and fun of gameplay, perhaps preferring instead to stimulate the imaginations of the player via the pixelated craziness they might encounter along the way. Indeed, it was almost more fun for fans to discuss amongst themselves the backstories behind such simple characters as Karnov, Rygar, or Pitfall Harry than to have it all laid out for them by the designers. Number 2. Pick Up and Play Have you ever picked up and begun a game only to find out that the title in question has deemed fit to bore you silly with an overly long tutorial section? Retro gaming didn't bother much with this idea, preferring instead to keep it simple with the much aligned pick up and play scenario. The combination of simple stripped down controls and an easily approachable level of understanding made it commonly accessible for just about anyone to almost immediately get acclimated to their gaming surroundings and to get in on the fun. Then again, when your controller only has two action buttons, I guess you don't really need to learn that much. Number 1. Local Multiplayer Speaking of fun, what's more fun than actually having a group of your closest friends or family physically in the room with you for a gaming experience? This, above all, is our reason why retro gaming was so awesome, simply due to the fact that it stimulates our personal connections with each other, all in the name of having a little fun. While there's obviously still a very good handful of titles that can be played locally on split screen, it seems like more and more this sort of feature is becoming a thing of the past. Someday we might be telling our kids, you know, back in my day we used to sit next to each other to play games. Crazy concept, I know. You win. Do you agree with our list? <laughs> Why do you play retro games? For more nostalgic top 10s published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. Oh!